Hi, my name is Pedro Lopez, and I lead the Human Computer Integration Lab at the University of Chicago. Today, I'm very happy to present four new papers that are going to come out at the WIST 2022 conference from my team to you. The first, by my student Jasmine Liu, is this watch that really is not a normal smartwatch. My heart rate now is at 76 beats per minute. This is a smartwatch with heart rate function, but it is also a smartwatch that contains a living organism inside. Now, this living organism is part of the functionality of the smartwatch. If this living organism is not healthy, I no longer have the ability to tell the heart rate of the device. So in this type of interaction, I need to care for this living organism by giving it water and oats every day so that I can benefit from the heart rate, which now is at 76 bits per minute. Now, why would Jasmine make a smartwatch harder and more frictionful to use? Well, we're trying to investigate how we can care more about our devices. Perhaps by integrating a living organism, I will feel a type of kinship that I cannot feel with inert and immaterial things that were our normal devices are made of. So with this exploration, Jasmine is asking the question, can we perhaps be more mindful of the ecological footprint of our devices rather than trashing it and getting a next one? In the second project, I'm also showing you something that is not exactly what it seems. This is a haptic device, an exoskeleton that, most like haptic devices, provides me sensations like force and vibration. Let me show you an example of what it does. Here, I'm walking and rowing this boat in this virtual simulator. Now, at some point, I get to this island, and in this island, I can walk around and go to this coconut tree and bang on it. When I bang on it, I also feel a vibration here. Thanks for anyone on my wrist to represent me hitting the coconut tree. Now, what I didn't tell you is that this device contains absolutely no battery, which is very strange for haptic devices because normally haptic devices contain a ton of battery to create sensations like force and vibration and so forth. So what's the catch? What was the energy coming from? What my student Shen Yuan created is a haptic device that harvested when I was rowing that boat in virtual reality. The harvesting of users' movement is what's powering the device forever. Now, this device is very different from haptic devices that you might experience, and in fact, its battery will outlast the battery of the VR headset, will outlast maybe even all of us, because it can work forever. So it's a new way to rethink how we power haptic devices, even those that provide very strong forces. In the next project, also in virtual reality, we're tackling what we think is one of the most important puzzles in all of virtual reality. How can users keep a sense of immersion, of believability in what they're experiencing in VR? But let me show you when this can break down very easily in contemporary VR. Here I'm gonna be watching a scene, but my environment is kind of out of my control. Let's see what happens. The scene is pretty believable in terms of what I see, except I also feel this wind coming from over here. And this wind doesn't match any of the VR content I see in my scene. So it clashes. There's a physical sensation that does not match the virtual sensation. And that clash creates a break in immersion. I stopped believing in the VR that I was immersed in. Now, my student Yu Jie Tao, who's now a PhD student at Stanford University, has been really interested in this question. And so we try to tackle it from a new perspective. Rather than adding things to block the distractions, we've created an add-on with sensors that can track the distractions as they happen in physical land, in physical world. So here there's a wind sensor that can track, for instance, the wind. Let's see how that changes how I experience. So again, I'm seeing the same scene, except this time, look at that. I'm feeling wind, and I'm seeing this curtain move. These universes are coherent. The physical and the virtual sensations make sense. So we're proposing to integrate distractions in VR to keep the users immersed. And you can do this with more than just wind. You can do this with smells. You can do this with sound and much more. In the final project, I'm going to show you a new exoskeleton that we made that is different from this one that allows users to learn from each other's hand poses. This is Yudai and Romain, and they're going to play a melody for you, except only one of them really knows the melody, and they're sharing these hand poses in real time, not just the sequence, of events, but also the pressure and the rich information that one cannot even see from the eyes as you're watching your teacher. You really have to feel it. What they've actually shown in this project, which was led by my former postdoc Jun Nishida, who's now a faculty at Maryland, is that people actually learn better with this device than if they're just observing their teacher. 
Now, there's a catch to this device, which makes it very different from haptic devices like this one. This is mostly 3D printed. It's extremely cheap. You could build hundreds of these for pretty much close to nothing and give them to classrooms and so forth, environments where a student and a teacher can benefit from this intimate connection. Especially where people got better is not just in playing the sequence, but in feeling things that are impossible to see, such as how much pressure you need to put in every single movement. So those are the four papers that we have for you for WIST. Uh, for more information, either come see our talks at WIST or watch our website.